However, I stay coochie <laughs> down to the socks, rings, and watch. Yeah. Yeah. You know this word for word? Host for me and a TP. So I'm guess, let's say yes, you do know it. Word for word. I gotta listen to it like once or twice to refresh. It's like, I gotta refresh, like, listen to everything to refresh it. Like, juicy, I could do that word for word. Like, no matter if I'm listening to it now or 10 years from now. No. But, like, the whole catalog, I, like, listened to a lot of Biggie when, like, the Notorious movie came out, like, back in, I don't know when that was. It was, like, 2009. Like, it was, like, 2009, 2002. Oh, okay. Something like that. But, uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Infusion Breakdown Show. As always, your boy Joshua Freeman. To my left, I got Mr. Brian Carey. I got that good look, girl. You didn't know. You didn't know. But <laughs> to my right, I got Mr. Desmond Tillman. Hope you guys are doing well. But uh, remember, we got our timestamps in the description below. Remember, go down there. Check out what you want to watch. Click on it, okay? Um, but the question we have on the docket today. <laughs> the question we have on the docket. Um, what should be the goal of humanity? Um, what do you guys think? Remember, comment below. Let us know, okay? We do want to hear you guys' opinions. Uh, so, who do you, who do you want to we want to take this first? Without divulging too much into it, because I want to see what you guys have to say before I go into explanation. But my answer to it, I believe the goal of humanity should be continuous improvement on a micro and macro level in that order. You said in that order. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have we talked about this before? The goal of humanity? I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's like a, a casual conversation. I could have swore we did or something like this. segue from something else. We said we, we talked about I think about we had like a similar conversation because I, I, what I'm about to say, I, I feel like I've said it to y'all before, but I feel like my goal, like the goal for humanity is not something necessarily on like a, that can be addressed on the macro level first. I think it's like, just like you said, subtle changes on the micro level that will lead to bigger changes on the macro level per se. Like focusing on like like you said self improvement, but for me, I think the one goal of humanity should be like happiness. And I want to say we had this talk about it because I've said happiness before, and then we tried to break down. Well, what are your definitions of happiness? Okay, so just now I ran back to the episodes we've done, and so I think this was an offshoot of the conversation we had about uh, what is a society good or bad, or or is the society <laughs> heading in the right direction. That's okay, the conversation. That's what I, it's humanity headed in the right direction. Yeah, it's humanity yeah. headed in the right direction. Yeah. So I think that was a part of that conversation. Oh, okay. But yeah. But you said first, what do you mean first starting on a micro level? Like what? Because if you're if you're saying humanity, then you obviously are talking about populace and whole as far as the entire world. Like what should be a common, you know, goal as far as unity. And you could obviously say that the number one goal as far as unity should be taking care of climate obviously with the uh amazon um fires uh, going on in brazil right now that's like been at the forefront for like every celebrity and then every environmentalist anybody who cares about something has mentioned something about the rainforest being on fire i feel like if we're going to talk about you know change change always has to start on the micro level and then expand to the macro level like even even if we wanted to tie it back to the conversation last week and how we were trying to figure out what exactly is Jay Z gonna do? Jay Z can't like create this umbrella and then just expect everything to go down from the top to the bottom. It starts from the bottom, and then from there his vision will take place. Just the same way with humanity. Like think about it. As as much as we don't like our liberties being infringed on, what if it became mandatory for you to recycle, and if not, you were imposed fines that you had to pay. That could lead to, you know, other fines that, you know, prevent your license from being renewed or preventing your registration from being renewed. If you it, it's kind of like you kind of have to hit people in the pockets to get their attention because people aren't going to necessarily pay attention to, you know, things that they can get out of. Like, think about it now what Virginia just did to where they can't suspend your license for unpaid court fines. Think about how many people are not going to pay the court fines, not knowing that there's probably like a stipulation to where if you have unpaid court fines, then now you can't renew your license and now you can't renew your registration. So think about how many how now people are thinking, 
well, damn, I need to pay it anyway. Like, just because there is an incentive not to pay it because I'm not going to get my license re uh, revoked, I still need to pay it. So think about, you know, if someone is um, having in the back of their mind that, you know, somebody could walk, somebody could, a city official could come by and, you know, check my trash, make sure I am recycling the way I'm supposed to recycle or making sure I am disposing of waste that I'm supposed to be disto disposing of properly. That, of course, is then going to turn into reduce land mat or landfill waste well it might it might not but it, it'll be like more controlled in the sense to where you have like less throwaway plastics like things that obviously go into the ocean and then cause some form of harm to our you know is it bio life marine life yeah we'll go with marine sure. life <laughs> we'll go with marine life ecosystem like things like that things of that nature and then just from there you like trickle on like fines aren't going to need to be in place to always push it but it's going to be need to enforce like once it's enforced and people are in compliance then it's going to expand in some way that is going to then develop on a macro level and I think the ecosystem example you just used is a perfect example because just like like a natural ecosystem the way that humans have organized ourselves we're organized in a way that there's many different complex relationships between what, like each different entity. So like the, the countries, the government, the individuals, the families, mm -hmm. the schools, the churches, the organizations. There's so many different complex levels that the best way, if you want to start influence, is from an individual level. Because it's easier for you to make a difference there than it is on a higher level. So one of the, it's actually two books that I was thinking about when I was going back over this question when I, when I thought about it. So the first one is 12 Rules for Life and Antidote to Chaos. And then the second one is Seven Rules for Highly Effective People. So the first one that I spoke of was by Jordan Peterson. And rule number seven is set your house in order before you criticize the world. And I believe like that just embodies the, the ideology that it's, it's so much easier to cause damage if you don't set your house in order or properly address the things on an individual level. Because mm -hmm. like I said, it's very, we live in a very complex environment. Like you're more likely to do damage than you are to do good. Like if you don't have everything sorted out properly. And then so from Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, that book is tremendous. I definitely recommend to either of you, like being very sharp for individuals. But so there's a habit in there. I think it's habit number six called Sharpen Your Saw. And so the saw is a metaphor for the human mind or the individual itself. So you think about a saw with a dull blade if I give you a saw with a dull blade and I tell you to cut down, uh, funny how you were talking about the ecosystem and cutting down trees. If I tell you to cut down some trees, right, and I give you a dull blade and I tell you you have three hours, but I give Josh a saw and I give him a whetstone so he can actually sharpen his saw. And so after the three hours I come back, Josh is going to have more cut down than you because he can spend the first two hours sharpening his saw and you're using a dull blade and you accomplish less mm -hmm. because you're less effective because you haven't been taking care of yourself. So I think by doing that, by setting your house in order, by sharpening your saw, whichever metaphor you want to do, you're able to optimize yourself and present the world with the best version of yourself so you can make the best difference and be more of a asset than a liability. Yeah, I actually think that's a that's a great example because I actually had a talk with my um with one of my coworkers earlier in the week. Uh, well, actually, this is the start of a new week. So uh, last week, and it was about, um, I want to say Montessori schools. And I think she like took offense to how things are necessarily ran in a Montessori school. And the one thing that she took real quick, could you tell me what a Montessori school is? I cannot, but I can. I'm about to tell you, like, kind of tell you, like how I think it's more of like a like an organic way of um, like learning. You should say, okay, like, I'll look it up. Do that, but the one thing Later. that she took um, in like great offense to was the fact that in a Montessori school the kids are responsible for washing their own dishes like kids are responsible for decorating their own classrooms like she was like when she walked in she just didn't feel the creativity and I think like with the Montessori school is they want to have more independence with the kid as far as you know independence from within with the kids necessarily so teaching the kids survival well not even survival skills like just the basic things you need to do to keep something you value in in um in decent form or decent fashion like just like how you say with the house if you're not washing dishes if you're not cleaning up after yourselves you're going to welcome in ants and rodents things that you don't want 
if you're not vacuuming your carpet, you're welcome. In, you're welcome in tons and tons of like dead skin cells and you know lint and a whole bunch of bacteria you don't want. So if you're teaching kids at a young age how to take care of just basic, you know, living and you know, cleaning tasks, think about how many kids like even even now with my son, like he doesn't he he's too young to clean up stuff. But if he goes to a school, he's going to learn how to do it way sooner than him. Rather than me or his mom teaching him how to do it. Hold on, you said if he was to go to a monastery yeah. school. Yeah, like they like they really big on just teaching you well, how to do what I you need to do. But I'm saying, are you implying that that's the right years considering going? That's no, no. I'm discussion. just saying. I'm just, just saying, saying, like if he was in yeah, yeah. Okay. Like she took offense to that, and I'm saying, well, what's wrong with that? Like, what's wrong with having kids learn to do chore tasks earlier so it's more of a something you do because it's required in life rather than something you do because it's a chore. Mm-hmm. Whether it's something you do just on your day to day, you know, life, you're not going to come to a point in life where folding clothes it seems like a like a hassle or washing dishes is like you have to mentally prepare yourself to do it. Like yeah, listen to what is it? Uh, what's the Rocky song? I, the I like you got to listen to I the Tiger <laughs> before you go wash dishes. Like you know, is she a parent? Who the, uh, the, the coworker? Yeah, talking. she got. I think she has like two kids. And, you know, I can, of course, like, respect, you know, the mom's instinct to protect. But then I feel like at the same time, there's, like, overprotection. But who and does I'm, all the cleaning, though? Because I'd be interested to I'm see the housing sure. dynamic yeah, pretty, between. Because depending on how old the kids are, because like you said, Lucas is too young to clean up. Yeah, I think her kids are, like, kindergarten through seventh grade. Okay, so they should at least be able to, like, pick up toys yeah, and stuff, yeah. right? And she probably still does the majority of the cleaning. Mm-hmm. So it might be cute for the first few years, but I don't think it's going to be last. She I don't know, man. Her. Some moms are are like that, though. Like some moms are will clean up after their kids until they're out, like until they're out of the house. Yeah, definitely. you're right. But then again, that's not healthy either. No, it's not. Because then you end up with a poorly equipped adult who doesn't know how to clean up and routine. Uh, excuse me, like root, routinize is not a word, but to establish their own routines and mm-hmm. well, be a functional just, adult. Yeah, those are just those basic skills that they're just. Of not allowing them to learn, basically, yeah. but, but yeah, I think you could say that that is a that should be a goal for humanity as well. Like I think it's something that's very, very like, um, it's very underrated. Like independence, independence in its totality, like financial independence, emotional independence, physical independence. Like, I think when you achieve all those, then you're able to then ta- take on everything that we're presenting right now because. I think you know, no matter what we present, there's always going to be a genesis, and then we present, then we present the genesis. Then we're going, oh, well, there's another genesis. Like you're always going to find new ways to like reinvent what you feel is the right move for humanity. You you do feel that, of course, teaching those what you just said is fine, but of course, there's going to be factors that will inhibit them people from learning that basically. Yeah, 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 definitely, okay. definitely, definitely. Make sure, okay, but, yeah. Yeah, but factors that inhibit people from learning what. Disabilities yeah. of sort. Are you saying like, yeah, take like, disabilities into account? Yeah, take, definitely take disabilities into account. But what I'm saying is like with the Montessori school though, like you you pay like good money for like the Montessori. But you don't even need a non-Montessori school. Though. You, you can you can do that at home. But what, what did we say though? What's My thing was like, what did I say? Like, they're more likely to learn something at school than they are to at home. Like a of lot course. of like, if you look at the cycle but that of life, doesn't mean that they're not going to learn something at home though. Yeah, yeah I think he's looking at the most effective way. Yeah, it's yeah. not he's not looking at just outliers and the yeah. fact that things exist. Like, I mean, think about it. You do learn a lot at home, but you you learn a lot at home on the weekends, or you learn a lot at home, like in the two hours that you have with your parents. And you, you think spend, about, yeah. So the school has more. I'm just more thinking access of access to the child than yeah. the parent does in most times. Yeah, I understand what you're talking. about. I'm just thinking of a um, actual. Well, okay, you know my job is ABA. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can do that at home and basically teach those type of skills at home without necessarily needing actual school. But think about in time as a, or well, even it just says my time as an ABA therapist. A lot of parents don't even know how to deal with that stuff until they see a therapist do it or until they get in with the uh the bcbas and have a strict regimen in place like a lot of what i'm saying is like the obvious stuff like you know growing up we knew we had to wash dishes after it was time to get done eating but for some people it's it's never it never happens yeah well i mean yeah but that could be but I'm giving too much of my job. Yeah, that could be like just a. I mean, uh, could, after you're done, let's let's go put it, it in the sink. It could be a lesson, but think about how 
difficult it is to teach like younger kids who are in ABA something new. Like it's not it's not hard in the sense of well that's it's not hard in the sense of like teaching it, but it's like hard in the sense of implementing it. But is that because they're a young kid, or is that because they're autism? So I think it's a mix of both. <clears throat> Okay, well, if, Cause, if okay, if we talk, if we're taking autism, we're just talking about any kid, basically, right? Yeah. Okay, we're talking about any kid. You can teach those skills to yeah. basically any kid without needing actual school. Not saying that Montessori school is like bad or anything. I'm just saying like we save money. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like you can. You then can, you're uh, implying that one of the parents stays home. True, yeah. so. but I mean, this it's always time if you can make the time. There's always time after work. I mean, if the parent, it depends on the parent though, and of course, yeah. if they have the actual knowledge of. Yeah. What you what you're talking about, but yeah, but my um my my thing about the goal of humanity was basically what you guys said, but basically on a more of a macro level, just making the time that we have here heaven like, basically, uh, whether through creating our emotional, <laughs> whether our creating our emotional state or whatever it is, but basically making this life heaven because. Based on our based on our abilities to like just throw away lives and in society and everything like that, I just feel like we don't we focus more on our survival rather than the actual survival of the human race, basically. You so know? would you say more euphoric than heaven like? Say that one more time. Would you say more euphoric than mm-hmm. heaven like? What is like that should be a goal to have, like t- time on Earth be more euphoric. More heaven like. You think I'm saying more for you? I think I think heaven like can be controversial, depending on what people believe in. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. But I was thinking, uh, okay, I guess my what? I'll leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my basically definition of heaven like things are healthy around you, mm-hmm. things like that. Not, of course, I know what you mean. Though. But yeah, but that's just like to say you say heaven like, and then some people are like, well, what does that even mean? Like I've never read, I've never. But they know what heaven is. Like heaven and hell are at this point. If you don't know the concept of heaven or hell, whether you subscribe to that particular religious belief system or not, I think it's very apparent. Nobody thinks hell is a good place. Uh, well, no one thinks heaven is a bad place. So you can have an atheist that walks into a baker and says it smells like heaven, right? They don't say, "Oh, it smells like hell in here." It's hot as hell. They said, "Yeah, <laughs> it's not pleasant." <laughs> Yeah, you say that, but <laughs> but I think what you're getting at is is really important too. Because so look at how insignificant we are on like a universal timeline. So for example, did you know that Cleopatra she lived closer to the inception of the iPhone than she did the Great Pyramids of Giza? Mm-hmm. They were built 2,500 years prior to her birth, and here we are in 2019. When was the first iPhone? Came? When did it come out? 2008. Exactly. So it's like a little bit over 2,000 years. So that just shows you how how insignificant we are on that timeline for the fact that she was able to be, the time where she existed and where she ruled in Egypt was closer to the, the Great Pyramids of Giza than it was the iPhone. And like, where do we fit in there? Like, it's, it's so, that's where a lot of our, our freedom comes from because like, we know that things are insignificant and ultimately like, it doesn't matter because we are the insignificant, that, we, that it frees us up for possibility to make changes. And I think that's where our power comes from because although that we're fine like we're not gonna last forever but we have the opportunity for our changes to persist long beyond our existence yeah makes sense you energetic no i was just just listening listen. it's a good yeah but i think we're pretty much in agree uh in agreement basically what the goal of humanity is betterment of society in some way basically right whether it's through individuals huh? what, what are you doing what do you mean what are you doing to, to better yourself what am I doing to better myself yeah uh, like, like eating doing, doing not not planning but like what are you yeah. doing now yeah uh, working out that's how you better yourself make yourself healthier eating healthier that's, that's one I mean why how is that a benefit to society though how is it a benefit to society because I'm the longer I'm around the the more I can contribute to society I mean, if I keep eating worse, you know what I mean? Like eating McDonald's hamburgers and I die two months from now from high blood pressure or some shit like that. I'm not saying that 
McDonald's give you high blood pressure. But if that happens, then I'm less likely to contribute <laughs> to society than being alive. You know what I mean? Being Drops healthy. Happy meal. <laughs> but, being but see, also, while you're taking care of yourself physically, you're there longer for your family so you can establish and kind of like set things straight with them and pass on valuable knowledge. Mm-hmm. And you're also less of a burden, too, because you think about... So my granddad, he was talking about... Um, he, he's... He's in great shape for to be somebody his age, like 74, 75 ish. So just the fact that he's able to get around like that, there's a lot of people his age that don't have that ability. And that some people in that condition they feel like they're a burden and they have to go through like healthcare system, get shoveled in and it's inexpensive. So by you taking care of yourself, you're less likely to be in a situation like that where you can still be independent and do things for yourself at a later age. It's more considerate, I feel like. Yeah. Desmond, what are you doing? I mean you're not, you you should have known I was gonna ask you. What am I doing for the betterment of myself and society or just myself? I mean, is one not synonymous with the other? He doesn't think so. No, I think I think in no, ways you, it, you do? I think oh. I I do think <laughs> they are, but I think like one example is like, oh, that's definitely just for yourself and then you could take another one and say, Oh, like how are you contributing to society? Like one way could be like, Oh, I, I ride my bike to work rather than driving type thing. But do you? No, I don't. I'm just saying like that's that could have been an example. <laughs> I, I will at some point. I, that's actually funny you say because one of my uh, my team leads at work like rides his e scooter to work every day mm-hmm. instead of driving. But uh, I guess we could say one thing that I'm doing for the betterment of myself and society is attempting to raise a kid different as far as like breaking generational curses and things of that nature. And spending a lot of time like focusing on his development at a really young age rather than just being focused on, you know, my own personal growth. Because I feel like in ways you kind of grow as an individual by teaching. And I feel like parenthood is just if you choose to be a part of the the process is nothing but, you know, a, a teaching and kind of counseling experience. Like, yeah, you, you do do a lot. You do a lot of like parenting things but nevertheless for the most part it's a lot of it's a lot of teaching it's a lot of consoling and it's a lot of you know frustrations too at the same time because you know you're you're trying to teach kids autonomy and independence and to not you know just be needy their entire time but then at the same time you want to give them all that stuff to where it kind of you know it could hinder them at a point like giving a kid everything does hinder them in a way to where they never really learn the value of a true thing Whereas with me, it's like cool to see how my son falls in love with like the simplest of things. Like you, could, like when he was a kid, um, my niece used to always need like her iPad or something at the table, and you could give him like a straw or a wrapper, and he would like have the most fun with it. Like it was the greatest thing he ever saw, and he's that way even now. Like he's been like that his in, like entire existence of you know two years and some change. So it's really cool to see like when you set firm boundaries for what you want to you know accomplish as a parent like it comes to fruition in time and in time could be you know a couple weeks it could be a couple months but it's always going to come in time whereas like if we were to you know make a drastic change on how we live our lives for the ecosystem it might not be a change that we see in our lifetime but for you know maybe our kids our our grandkids you know lifetime it would be something beneficial for them so it's cool it's it's definitely cool to you know parent at the end of the day because you can kind of see everything that your parents might have not necessarily did wrong but did out of ignorance and you can kind of reassess and go back to the drawing board and think how did how did I feel when my mom or dad said this to me and how do I want my kid to feel if they're ever in the same situation type thing so I guess you could say the one thing that I'm really trying to contribute to not only myself but society is the idea of accountability Mm -hmm. and taking responsibility for what you do at the end of the day because there's a lot of people that do things out of ignorance and let ignorance be their their cry on the stand rather than just taking accountability and learning how to do things right the first time or learning how to do things right after you've made a mistake Mm -hmm. so accountability that was that that was actually my goal for 2019 that doesn't surprise me your answer for one, because so back when we had the conversation about gun violence and like this video games causing it, mm-hmm. like you said the biggest cause in your opinion was upbringing. Yeah. 
And so that echoes that. I mean, I, I agree between that and... Okay, I'm not going to go back to the discussion. But anyhow, so you, you were saying that the way you upbring someone, the, the way you raise a child, has the most significant influence of anything. So, like, the way you nurture them supersedes nature. Like, nature is, is the raw material, mm-hmm. but the actual nurturing is when you actually chisel it away, when you actually create the David from the, from the slab of marble. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. How are you? How are you? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. No, how are you? <laughs> how am I contributing? <laughs> better to yeah, to society. <laughs> and better myself. By continuously learning. So I feel like I can contribute more of, of an asset, yeah. or be, excuse me, be more of an asset to any team, any group, any organization, any relationship that I'm in, that I can present the best version of myself and continuing to improve on a daily basis, whether it be like physically or like I said, like learning. That's the biggest one. Yeah. Because your mind is your most powerful weapon that you have access to. Yeah. So that's, that's something that, I'm, that I really uh, prioritize. And then also just doing small things. So I'm a big believer in leaving things better than the way that you came in contact with them. So if I happen to be walking somewhere and it's like a, a plastic bag floating around, I'll go ahead and throw that away. Like even if it's just like on the street I and mean, it's not my street, why should I pick it up? But I'll throw it away. Unless it's like something nasty like, like, a, like a bottle of piss or something like that because people throw stuff like that out. But if it's something just like a bag or, or a cup or something like that, I'll go ahead and throw it away. It's just those little things that, although they're very insignificant, it's just a piece of plastic that over time, it adds up. If everyone did that, yeah. the streets would be a lot cleaner. I'm sorry. I was just trying to imagine in my head, like, who would throw out a bottle of piss? I'm trying I'm to serious, think. Right? Right? A glass, a glass bottle, which they throw out the nah, window. It's like, no, it's, it's like, like Pepsi bottles. Like, uh, okay. like a lot of landscapers, they like pee in Gatorade bottles. Interesting. Yeah, my dad. Does like it, even, he throws it into the back of his truck. Even the road where where I grew up on, like we did uh, some community cleaning. Like we had the little sticks with the nails and picked up trash, and it was bottles of piss. People just ride in the road and just yeah. throw it out. I know you've seen Johnson Family Vacation. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah. Is there anything else you guys wanna talk about as far as the goals? humanity anything else you guys can think of as far as anything responsibility yeah. accountability I, I feel like for anyone listening i think your your main goal as far as what you know the goal for humanity should be is to like make it as simple as possible don't try and overcomplicate it because trying to make change for all is literally impossible if you're not making the change within first so you know it could literally be something as simple as changing the way you eat changing the way you think, changing your routine, changing how you think. Like, literally, the smallest things equate to just, you know, the domino effect as far as, like, positive way, positive way of the, of the domino effect. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Cool. You have an album of the week for us? This may be catching me off guard. <laughs> uh, how long have we been doing this? <laughs> you know, we actually didn't do an album of the week. We did, like, one album of the week last week with like the three episodes man and skipping a little bit yeah. yeah to be honest man my my I'm album of the no week more. yeah my album of the week is gonna be uh perfect 10 by dj mustard i don't know if he just go by mustard now because he he got an album but yeah dj who mustard <laughs> <laughs> why is that your album of the week because it's like he got a uh, really good song up there it's like it's not the first. Is it posthumous? After they died, yeah. Yeah, posthumous feature with Nipsey, but I think it's the second one, and he has a really good. Might be second or third one. He has a really good verse on it. It's called Perfect Ten. Or well, is it Perfect Ten? Yeah. So it's Perfect Ten. It's ten songs, and the tenth song is called tenth song is called Perfect Ten, and it got Nipsey on it. So what you're telling me is that you wanted to make this week's album of the week another Nipsey album? No, nah, but you couldn't make it a Nipsey album because nah, it's nah, an album of the week. My last favorite week. song on the and album. The it is perfect ago. 10 but right i see what you're trying to do <laughs> but i actually like a lot of songs on the album i can listen to probably about six out of the 10 60 percent 70 percent. so it's not a perfect 10 for some people it is a perfect 10 for me i like stop it <laughs> hey it's a perfect six <laughs> perfect six but yeah hey you guys are here <laughs> what do you guys think though what should be the goal of humanity though uh Comment below, let us know, okay? But that's gonna that's gonna be it for the this week's uh, episode. Anything else you have to say to the audience? Stay positive. Do?
What are you doing to improve yourself or to impact humanity? Exactly. Comment below. Let us know. But we'll see you guys next time, okay? Peace. Look, welcome to the show. Go and take a seat. Let's talk about the world while taking a sip of tea. A bunch of brothers come together. That's something we love to see. The company can't get no better. We come from running the streets. But we here now the vibes all good. We survive. We gon' try and show the world inside the minds of some visionary brothers. We only got each other. We don't support each other. Ain't nobody gonna love us. We can talk about the violence, the silence, the Mayans, the stake that the minds and the science, the violence. Living and dying and laughing and crying. Pure bliss and heartache. And quitting and trying That's real from the heart Truth in the heart To so come up in the future We just gotta play our part Can we handle that? Let them tear us apart Infusion breakdown show Go and talk about your thought